Welcome to the 38th News and Documentary Emmy Awards. Our first presenter this evening is the co-anchor of ABC News Nightline, Byron Pitts. You guys look great. Yes, this has been a demanding year to be a journalist. Yes, we often criticize in many corners. But you know what? What's happening in Las Vegas right now reminds us that ours is important work. What's happening in Puerto Rico, what happened in Texas, in Florida, affirms for us that journalism matters. It is important work. It is honorable work. It is both a privilege and a responsibility. And how blessed we all are this evening to have the opportunity to honor some of the finest men and women in our profession. So let's get started. The nominees for Outstanding Investigative Report in a News Magazine are... Brian Ross Investigates, The Girl Left Behind, 2020, NBC. Rikers Island, 60 Minutes, CBS. Russia's Dark Secret, 60 Minutes, CBS. Do no harm. Dateline NBC. NBC. Cost of the game. The dangers of youth football. Real sports with Bryant Gumbel. HBO. These things aren't easy to open. And the Emmy goes to Cost of the Game. The dangers of youth football. Real Sports with Brian Gumbel, HBO. Accepting the Emmy, Nick Dolan, segment producer. In the past three years, 17 boys nationwide have died after sustaining head injuries on the football field. That's nearly six deaths a year. If those numbers were happening in the NFL, that would be a scandal. It would be, nobody would tolerate that. No, America wouldn't tolerate it. Congress wouldn't tolerate it. It's amazing the way we've sat back and allowed this to go on. Dramatic pause. Here he comes. Well, it's a long trip from the balcony. <laughs> I'd like to thank Richard Plepler, uh, Peter Nelson, Rick Bernstein, and Joe Persky at HBO, the, uh, the men who allow us to do uh, the kind of work you just saw. Uh, folks who worked with me on this, Nisreen Abal, Stu Ash, Brian Durr, uh, 37 years ago, I attended the DuPont Awards uh, with my father. I'm quite lucky to have him with me uh, tonight as well. Thank you so much. The nominees for Outstanding Nature Documentary are Triumph, David Attenborough's Conquest of the Skies, Smithsonian Channel. David Attenborough's Light on Earth, Curiosity Stream. Giraffes, Africa's Gentle Giants, Nature, PBS. Super Hummingbirds, Nature, PBS. Sonic Sea, Discovery Channel. And the Emmy goes to Sonic Sea, Discovery Channel. Accepting the Emmy, Joel Reynolds, Executive Producer. It was uh, kind of devastating. Animals that I had grown to know over a 10-year period were now dead. They were trying to get away.
Congratulations and thank you to the entire Sonic Sea team, led by NRDC, Imaginary Forces, IFA, Discovery Channel, and the Fawcett Family Foundation. A hundred years ago, our oceans were filled with the sounds of whales and other marine life communicating. Today, that communication is being drowned out by incredibly intense military and industrial noise in a dark ocean world where hearing and being heard are essential to survival. Since January, NRDC has had to sue the Trump administration over two dozen times for their destructive attacks on the environment, and we aren't going to stop. But Sonic Sea, <laughs> but Sonic Sea, is an exciting new chapter in that effort. And your recognition tonight is an inspirational step forward in our campaign for healthy oceans. It's a battle we have to win. Thank you very much. The nominees for Outstanding Politics and Government Documentary are... Among the Believers, Doc World, World. He is the Choice motivated. 2016, Frontline, PBS. Wilhelmina's War, Independent Lens, PBS. Trumpland, The Naked Truth, Fusion. Hooligan Sparrow, POV. PBS. And the Emmy goes to The Choice 2016 Frontline PBS. Accepting the Emmy, Rainey Aronson, Executive Producer. Every critic every detractor will have to bow down to President Trump. It's everyone who's ever doubted Donald, whoever disagreed, whoever challenged him. It is the ultimate revenge to become the most powerful man in the universe. Right, we're laughing. <laughs> Thank you so much, what a great honor. For the last eight presidential elections, Frontline has produced The Choice. It's a two-hour exploration of the life method of the nation's presidential candidates, the highest form of political biography that we produce. In 2016, with the biographies of Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, we are especially proud of that achievement. We are doing serious journalism, as so many of us are during these serious times. I need to thank PBS, CPB, and GBH for their commitment to such serious efforts. Thank you, and so many of you are here with us tonight. But Michael Kirk, of course, the director of this incredible choice, um, is working. He's working on Putin's Revenge, which is coming out just in two weeks, where he would be here with us tonight. A moment about Mike, he's an inspiration to all of us and has been with us, actually, since the start of Frontline. In fact, he's in the edit room of Mike Weiser, his partner in crime, co-producer and writer, and they're working away on Putin. On stage with us tonight is Jim Gilmore, who co-produced and reported the Trump parts of the film, and Gabrielle Schoenberg. Congratulations, you guys. Of course, our managing editor, Andrew Metz, and special thanks also to Phil Bennett, Steve Audette, Ben McCoy, who masterfully shot this film, and Colette Hanna for all that she does. Thank you. The nominees for Outstanding Editing are... Morley Safer, A Reporter's Life, 60 Minutes, CBS. The Music of Zomba Prison, 60 Minutes, CBS. The White Helmets, 60 Minutes, CBS. Steps into a High Calm, ABC News Digital, ABC. Philippines Drug War, Vice News Tonight, HBO. And the Emmy goes to The White Helmets, 60 Minutes, CBS. 
accepting the Emmy, Patrick Lee, editor. The airstrikes, day and night, obliterate apartments and shatter the nerves. Often the bombs are not aimed at military targets, they're not aimed at all. Just a barrel of shrapnel and TNT heaved from a helicopter. Thank you. I think I can do this, um, just like you guys reading the tracks. So I'm going to give you a long version. Three, two, one. Thank you so much for this acknowledgement. This is a great honor being nominated with my mentor, Warren Lustig. He's here. And he gave me my first job at CBS News, and I have been learning and stealing from him ever since. <laughs> and um, I have to thank my team, Katie Kerbstad and um, Nicole Yang, and the one and only Mr. Scott Pelley. Where are you? Thanks also to Bill Owens. Um, thanks for guidance and support. And hats off to Jeff Fager, our supreme leader. <laughs> thanks always being the smartest person in the room. And of course, I'm forever grateful to you because you bring Oprah into my life. <laughs> and lastly, um, a heartfelt thank you to the White Helmets. Um, for two months, I've watched you risk your own lives and save other people's lives. And um, it had a profound effect on me, and uh, I know the world is a better place because of you. We have a White Hammers here today, and um, I'm really grateful that I met him, and thank you. The nominees for Outstanding Graphic Design and Art Direction are Flying Monsters with David Attenborough, Smithsonian Channel, Sonic Sea, Discovery Channel, Spillover, Zika, Ebola, and Beyond, PBS, Stephen Hawking's Favorite Places, Curiosity Stream, Vox Pop, Vox. And the Emmy goes to... Stephen Hawking's Favorite Places, Curiosity Stream. Accepting the Emmy, Jason White, Visual Effects Director. But imagine I could go anywhere and see anything. Well, in this bad boy, I can. Join me on a fantastical trip to my favorite places. This is a great honor. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I've got a few geniuses to thank. Uh, so I'll start with um, my uh, fellow artist at We VFX. Um, uh, thank, thank you to um, especially Jordan Cadby, lead artist and visual genius. Um, but thanks to the whole team. Uh, also Ben Bowie and his uh, Ben Bowie, sorry, and his production team at uh, Bigger Bang uh, for their uh, editorial genius. Uh, thank you to Curiosity Stream uh, for their commissioning genius. Um, and uh, just very exciting project. And uh, above all, thank you to uh, Professor Stephen Hawking. What an inspirational figure um, to all of us working uh, in this field of uh, uh, factual science broadcasting. Thank you. Great honor. Thanks very much. The nominees for Outstanding Science, Medical, and Environmental Report are... 
Vanishing, the Earth's sixth mass extinction. CNN Digital, CNN. Standing Rock and the Battle Beyond. Fault Lines, Al Jazeera International, USA. Hunting for the origins of the universe in Chile's desert. Hello World, Bloomberg Television. The End of AIDS, PBS NewsHour, PBS. Toxic Lake, the untold story of Lake Okeechobee. Weather Channel, weather.com. And the Ibby goes to the end of AIDS. PBS NewsHour, PBS. Accepting the Emmy, William Brangham, correspondent. So to stem this epidemic, how do you reach this hard to reach population? Well, you try something like this. This is what state-of-the-art HIV care and prevention in Kenya looks like. You set up your testing team, not in a clinic, but right next to the water. You do it at night because that's when the fishermen are coming home. Thank you very, very much. Um, I'm William Brangham, and on behalf of my partner, uh, producer Jason Kane, and uh, John Cohen of Science Magazine, the three of us really did this series together. Um, we feel an incredible debt of gratitude to work at a place like the PBS NewsHour that wants to do six primetime programs about the fight to defeat this epidemic. Uh, we're also hugely grateful to the Pulitzer Center, which funded this series, and really, without their support, this series would not have happened. And I think it's important to note at a time when there are people who are trying to sow distrust of the media and what we all do, that there were researchers and scientists and people living with HIV all over the world who trusted us to tell their story. And we are hugely grateful to them. And um, this is for them. Thank you very much. The nominees for Outstanding Feature Story in a News Magazine are... The Brothers Rosenberg, 60 Minutes, CBS. The Music of Zamba Prison, 60 Minutes, CBS. The New Columbia, 60 Minutes, CBS. The Resurrection of St. Benedict's, 60 Minutes, CBS. The Education of Omarina, Frontline, PBS. And the Emmy goes to the music of Zamba Prison, 60 Minutes, CBS. Accepting the Emmy, Bill Owens, executive editor. Something unusual happened on the way to the Grammy Awards this past year. An album was nominated from Malawi. The artists weren't polished pop stars, but prisoners and guards in a place called Zamba. Thank you very much. Um, on behalf of Michael Gavshon, Paul Bellinger, and uh, David Levine, who worked really hard on this story, um, I want to congratulate everybody else who was nominated as well. Um, they wanted to thank all the crews who were involved. It was an uh, arduous shoot for them, and um, they're very happy. Michael wanted me to say that they were very happy to bring the music of Zamba Prison out into the light. Thanks. The nominees for Outstanding Edited Interview are... The 45th President, 60 Minutes, CBS. The Hostage, 60 Minutes, CBS. The King, 60 Minutes, CBS. Pulse Nightclub Attack Survivor, CBS Evening News with Scott Pelley, CBS. David Letterman, Dateline NBC. NBC. Like. 
And the Emmy goes to The Hostage. 60 Minutes, CBS. Accepting the Emmy, Ira Rosen, producer. Listen, a lot has happened. I'm in the custody of these people. When Warren Weinstein was kidnapped in Pakistan, the ordeal his wife Elaine went through over the next several years reveals the level of desperation so many American families have experienced in trying to get their loved ones freed from terrorist groups. Love you. Uh, it's a great honor, especially with so many great candidates in this um, category. Uh, this goes to Elaine Weinstein, who spent four years trying to get her husband back from Al-Qaeda, only to see him die at the hands of a CIA drone strike. Um, this goes to her. Uh, I want to thank the indomitable Leslie Stahl, the great editor Sean Kelly, The Rock Bill Owens, and to Jeff Fager, who is the best editor in television, who does it week after week. Thank you. Please welcome CNN senior international correspondent, Clarissa Ward. Um, so I had the choice of making some pithy, profound remarks or getting us all to the bar 90 seconds earlier. You'll be delighted to know I'm going with option B. And with that, the nominees for Outstanding News Special are The President and the People, ABC News, ABC. Armed in America Town Halls, two night special. Police and Guns, Faith and Guns, PBS. Presidential Town Hall, America's Military and the Commander in Chief, CNN. Questions for President Obama, a PBS NewsHour special. PBS, 2016 Olympics, what Rio doesn't want the world to see, Vox Docs, Vox. And the Emmy goes to the President and the People, ABC News. Accepting the Emmy, David Muir. to work. As a single mother, what can I do? Well, first of all, uh, that's your son right next to you, right? The, uh, Michael, you want to stand, stand up? up? See, Michael, you're, 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 I was raised by a single mom, and I noticed in the video it said boss on there, <laughs> uh, on her necklace, <laughs> and... <laughs> President Obama really likes a town hall. He was in a number of those up there. We are honored uh, to accept this award. I just want to thank uh, Ben Sherwood, James Goldston, Tom Sobrowski, and the producers on this project, Mark Burstein, Jean Marie Condon, uh, David Sloan, Eric Avram, Christine Romo, all there with me. And more importantly, this Emmy is to all the families who gathered in that room. We could feel it that night. The families who are victims of deadly police shootings in this country, and all of the families of police officers who send their loved ones off to work every day and who are killed in the line of duty. And a president who was willing to take those tough questions. And sadly, at the end of that town hall, we learned that this is a conversation that's still in its infancy. So to all those families, let's keep the conversation going. Thank you. The nominees for Outstanding Continuing Coverage of a News Story in a News Magazine are... Breakthrough Chief Status, one of the 60 Minutes, CBS. The Killing Machine, 60 Minutes, CBS. Brian Ross Investigates, Five Days, Inside the Hunt for the Boston Bombers, ABC News Digital. ABC. What are they going to do? Presenting yourself the terrorist today. next door they and the face of terror. Dateline NBC. Mm -hmm. NBC. 
Yemen under siege. Frontline, PBS. And the Emmy goes to Yemen under siege. Frontline. Accepting the Emmy, Safa Al Ahmad, director, producer. مين هذا اللي ما يشتوني أكون موجودة يعني؟ لا لا He just says quite casually, these are Al-Qaeda and the Arabian Peninsula, uh, and he referred to them by their local name, which is Ansar al-Sharia. Um, he revealed what is considered an open secret. So I actually didn't prepare anything because I didn't want to jinx this. <laughs> so uh, this is quite uh, an honor. I would like to thank, I'm going to try not to cry. <laughs> I'd like to thank the many people who, uh, without them, none of my films would have been possible. <laughs> and, um, and I would like to thank Frontline for, for some reason, think that Yemen is important, saw the importance of telling that story way before the war happened, way before it became something that's in the news, before it was just a human catastrophe and too complicated. They saw the virtue of doing really good coverage of stories before they became something that everybody else talked about. So I'm hugely grateful for this chance and I hope this will give an incentive for other people to do more coverage in Yemen. Thank you. The nominees for Outstanding Video Journalism News are... Battle for Mosul, 60 Minutes, CBS. Steps into a high calm. ABC News Digital, ABC. Darren Conway, The Battle for Mosul. BBC World News America, BBC World News. Bryce Lane's reports from Iraq, CNN. Is Gangland, Nightline, ABC. And the Emmy goes to Battle for Mosul, 60 Minutes, CBS. Accepting the Emmy, Laura Logan. been together for a matter of hours and had already encountered a suicide bomber, a drone, and just outside Major Salam's headquarters, go, 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 go. snipers. Our team ran for cover. You can hear the snap of the bullets. So I feel like something of an imposter because this really belongs to Richard Butler and Scott Monroe, who um, captured that footage, and to Bill Owens, and uh, who put up with Richard and I day and night, and for Jeff Vega, who allowed him to do so. Um, five years um, in Iraq as a team for 60 Minutes, all of us, and uh, all of you here know that none of us do it on our own. and. Um, like the Yemeni people, no one has paid a higher price in this war than the people in Mosul. And it was, um, it was a mission of ours from the day that city fell to get back there. So thank you very, very much. Thank you, 60 Minutes. The nominees for Outstanding Writing are Breakthrough status, 60 today, Minutes, CBS. Later, the Music of Zamba Prison, 60 Minutes, CBS. The Resurrection of St. Benedict's, 60 Minutes, CBS. 
The White Helmets, 60 Minutes, CBS. Nick Payton Walsh, Midway, A Plastic Island, CNN Digital, CNN. And the Emmy goes to The White Helmets, 60 Minutes, CBS. Accepting the Emmy, Scott Pelley. Day after day, building after building, hour after hour, victim after victim, how do you keep going? There are a lot of people who need our help, he said. In a sense, I didn't write this piece at all. This piece was written by people who have tools that I do not possess. Tools of courage and faith. This story was written by the White Helmets. I just told the story. The White Helmets, for those of you who don't know, is the Syrian civil defense, and when Assad's bombs and Russian bombs fall on neighborhoods. They're the people who go in and pull out the survivors and rush them to hospitals. We have one of the White Helmets with us here tonight, Radi Saad, and I just want to pay tribute to him. Roddy uh, snuck up on me. They're everywhere, the White Helmets. <laughs> Big thanks to Nicole Young, who produces so many of our best stories at 60 Minutes, and Katie Kerbstadt, thank you so very much. And you've already met Patrick Lee, who edited the piece. I've taken too much time, but again, as always, big thanks to Jeff Fager and Bill Owens for creating the kind of shop where the written word is so important. Thank you. The nominees for Outstanding Business and Economic Documentary are... The Hand That Feeds, America Reframed, World, The Fantasy Sports Gamble, Frontline, PBS, Dogtown Redemption, Independent Lens, PBS, In Football We Trust, Independent Lens, PBS. Kingdom of Shadows, POV, PBS. And the Emmy goes to In Football We Trust, Independent Lens, PBS. Accepting the Emmy, Tony Venuku, Director. It's gone full circle for me, kicked me right in the butt. You know, it's something I deal with and I have to deal with day in and day out. Gangs or football? Both are violent and they both are camaraderie. Um. <laughs> I keep sneaking in the back door and they keep letting me stay, <laughs> is what I feel like. Um, we're super, I mean, I guess what we have, we have ITVS, the whole ITVS team that we are super thankful for. Um, our team, we worked with three editors and uh, Erica, I don't, I'm, I'm a little nervous, but um, this is a huge, huge honor. Our families that have, uh, I mean, sacrificed a lot for us to make this film. It took us seven years, and um, we're just, uh, we did, I mean, we did this from seven years of sacrifice, and ITVS came on and made it possible, and we were able to work with a lot of great filmmakers, so thank you so much, and 
to all the other films, I really wasn't, ex we, I mean, I, such great films that were uh, <laughs> nominated, so I wasn't really expecting this. Thank you. The nominees for Outstanding Science and Technology Documentary are... A Year in Space, PBS. Ebola, The Doctor Story, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. Into the Inferno, Netflix. My Beautiful Broken Brain, Netflix. Great Human Odyssey, Nova, PBS. And the Emmy goes to A Year in Space, PBS. Accepting the Emmy, Jonathan Helperin, director. Everything you know, everything you love, everything humanity has ever known is 250 miles below. We're waiting for the team from the balcony. Come on down, guys. We're waiting for John Halperin and Ian Orifice and everything getting from, from Time and, and PBS. So, they coming? Here they come. Here they come. almost up at the space station up there. Um, well, <laughs> it's a cliche to say that films are a collaboration. This is truly a collaboration. PBS, Time, Shell Schwartz, myself, my colleagues at Room 608, um, and of course, Scott. Um, We, we had it easy. We just got the footage and put it together. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. The nominees for Outstanding Arts, Culture, and Entertainment Report are Little Jazz Man, 60 Minutes, CBS. The Pope's Choir, 60 Minutes, CBS. Mouthing Off, Sunday Morning, CBS. Paint the Town, Sunday Morning, CBS. Hip Hop, Vox Pop. The Emmy goes to Little Jazz Man, 60 Minutes. Accepting the Emmy, Bill Owens, Executive Editor. For a jazz musician, there's no bigger stage than the Newport Jazz Festival. Most artists work a lifetime to get here if they ever make it at all. It's Joey Alexander's first time playing Newport. He's the youngest person ever invited to perform on this stage. So here I am again taking credit for Michael Gavchon's great work. But this time I did find his remarks. He wanted me to uh, thank the cameramen, Ken Fuhr, Aaron Tomlinson, and Greg Androcki. Soundman Everett Wong and Bill Hickey. Um, Michael also wanted to let everyone know when we did this story on Joey Alexander, he was 12, but he played his piano like an old soul. At 60 Minutes, we're always very happy to bring those stories to the rest of the world. Thanks so much.
The nominees for outstanding coverage of a breaking news story in a newscast are... The Battle for Mosul, BBC World News America, BBC World News. Orlando Pulse nightclub shooting, CBS News, CBS. The Road to Mosul, CBS News, CBS. Brussels under attack, NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt, NBC. Terror in Orlando, NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt, NBC. And the Emmy goes to The Road to Mosul, CBS News. Accepting the Emmy, Heather Abbott, senior producer. The SWAT team began firing tear gas canisters, throwing up a smoke screen before sending a team into the building. So they've been shooting at the building and also firing tear gas canisters. And now the assault team is about to go in. But as they approached, they came under fire and one of them was hit. <laughs> Thank you uh, very much. And um, I'm really quite surprised to be up here. This is an extraordinary category. Every uh, nomination, I think, could easily be here. Holly Williams is um, inside Syria, so she's uh, not here and why I am. Uh, the road to Mosul goes through DC and Damascus. It was a very challenging series. It could have just been easily called unfinished business because, of course, this all dates back to the invasion of Iraq in 2003 that is still playing out with unintended consequences across this country and the Middle East. I'd like to thank uh, Steve Kappas, Ryan Cadro, and Scott Pelley for their unwavering support of our foreign coverage. Holly Williams, Steve Berryman, Aaron Lyle, Haytham Musa, Justine Redman, Abdi Kadani, Omar Abdul Qadar have all made repeated trips at great risk to themselves to the north and across into the Syria and Iraq. And of course, there have been so many terrible uh, consequences for the civilians that have borne the brunt of this terrible war. This is for them. Thank you. Our next presenter is a past president of NBC News, ran the legendary CBS News Washington Bureau in the 1960s, and is a lifetime achievement Emmy Na Honoree. Please welcome Bill Small. Enough already, save a little for Charles. It's a great pleasure to be invited to take part in an, a uh, Lifetime Achievement Award for Charles Osgood. He's a man I've known for about 45 years, and in all those years, never once has he disappointed me. He's also that rarity, a network television guy who was a native of New York City. He's lived here all his life. He was born in the Bronx. He went to school in the Bronx. He went to, all the way to college. He went to Fordham University in the Bronx. <laughs> and it was on the Fordham radio station that he began to, to perform. As a side thing, he got a degree in economics. <laughs> Charles uh, is sort of everybody's favorite guy at CBS, and understandably. But I'll bet there's something that a lot of you don't know that's not his birth name. He was born Charles Wood. But before he came to CBS, 
he was invited to join ABC, and they said, but you got to change your name. We have a staff announcer named Charles Wood. See, announcers are more important than all of you guys, right? <laughs> and uh, Charles, always a romantic, chose his wife's maiden name, Osgood, and he's been Charles Osgood ever since. The, the two of them uh, have had a marvelous marriage, and uh, if I can see where Jean is, I would ask her to stand so that you can see her as well. <laughs> the marriage produced five children. They're all grown now and they have their own children, but a lot of them are in the room uh, as we speak, and I would ask them to stand up. And his brother is here from West Virginia, but he doesn't have to stand up. <laughs> He's standing anyway. <laughs> Charles came to uh, CBS basically to do radio news. I contend that he may be the most popular radio news anchor of our time. And, uh, they began to draft him to do some fill-ins on television. When an anchor man was away, including Walter Cronkite, Charles would do the show. Meanwhile, the other famous Charles, Charles Kuralt, Charlie Kuralt uh, did Sunday news on CBS, but he was retiring. And our Charles, Osgood, was named to take his place. And he's been doing it uh, 20 years, whatever, he, he'll tell you, I'm sure. But uh, he's had a marvelous run. The ratings have been excellent, if you care about ratings, and no one in this room cares about ratings. Uh, and uh, the best judgment of that is that almost every year, a Sunday news piece is nominated for an Emmy. And indeed, uh, even this year, they don't win every year, but they win their fair share. It's a remarkable show. I think it's maybe the best news magazine, for my taste, in all of television. Charles left, he was born in the Bronx, raised in the Bronx, went to school in the Bronx, and went to college at Fordham University, as I said. Uh, he's a favorite son of Fordham. And uh, a few years ago, I had reached retirement age, and uh, oddly enough, before I retired, no one seemed to make job offers. The moment they announced I was retiring, in they came and one was to be an endowed chair at Fordham University, the New York uh, version of it, which is a few blocks from here. And uh, my boss was uh, a former president of CBS, who some of you may remember, Arthur Taylor. He was dean. And uh, one day I walked in, Arthur looked glum. I said, what's wrong? He said, next week is our graduation. I said, I know that. He said, I just lost our speaker. What do I do? I said, I can get you a speaker. He's a friend of mine. He's a Fordham graduate. He has a degree in economics. <laughs> and so, I don't know what they were expecting, but they got Charles. Now, graduation speeches in business schools tend to be heavyweight and ponderous. In fact, many of the business executives that give those speeches are heavyweight and ponderous, but not Charles. 
he had a lot of things that were important to say, but also never was a graduation more entertaining. Smiles everywhere, laughter everywhere. And to this day, when I run into a, an old time faculty member, they say to me, can't you get Charles Osgood back again? Well, uh, he's with us tonight. Uh, as you know, he does radio every day. He tends to slip into rhymes. Some people laughingly call him the poet uh, of CBS News. Uh, others who know poetry says that's not quite going to win him a, a, an Academy, a uh, Pulitzer Prize. But that never slowed uh, Ch uh, Charles down. Uh, he succeeded Charles Corralt when Charles retired. And I'd like to read a quote from uh, Corralt, one Charles, over uh, about Osgood the second Charles. My daughter Tammy found this quote, and I read it now. Charlie Corralt wrote, all of us scratch away at the surface of the news. And then Charles Osgood comes. Along he comes whistling a merry tune and plowing a deeper furrow. It's my great pleasure to not introduce Charles, but his successor. Charles announced his retirement from television this year. CBS, in its wisdom, chose Jane Pauley, a marvelous news person, to take his place. You'll notice I didn't say newswoman. She was a top person, of, would compete with any of you. And she has anchored a, a film about Charles, a, a video, and uh, I'd, I'd like to give credits, as you know, and so you should know that this videotape was edited uh, by Ed Gervish and produced by Kathy Lewis, both of them on the Sunday morning staff. Roll the video. Good evening, I'm Jane Pauley. Throughout his nearly 60 years in broadcasting, any story by Charles Osgood is one of a kind, just like the man himself. He stalks the New York City subways, waiting for his chance to strike. When the opportunity comes, he moves fast. He has to. Opportunity for Keith Haring is a blank advertising poster. Charles Osgood's career began in the 1950s as a classical music DJ in Washington, D.C. American radio of the 1940s had a profound influence on me. It's the reason I'm doing what I do today instead of playing the organ at a skating rink. I could imagine no career more delightful, except perhaps to play shortstop for the Orioles. Baseball didn't pan out, but luckily for us, broadcasting did. This is Charles Osgood for ABC's Flair Report. This is Charles Osgood, News Radio 88. The Osgood File. This is Charles Osgood on the CBS Radio Network. His instantly recognizable voice, along with a distinctive writing style, quickly earned him a spot at CBS News. And now the mystery of the New York Gala. Just about everybody who is anybody was there. Anna Gruen, the housekeeper, police chief McGinnis, and Charles Osgood. Short words, short sentences, short paragraphs. There's nothing that can't be improved by making it shorter. Then, in 1994, he found his TV home as successor to Charles Kuralt. Good morning. I'm Charles Osgood, and this is Sunday Morning. I know, it sounds strange to me, too, but here we are. For the next 22 years, he would define Sunday morning television. I hope whatever work you do makes you happy, makes you smile. You may be at it quite a while. <laughs> do you remember the first piece he did for television? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember I had to unlearn a lot of things that I had learned for radio. Television is picture, picture, picture. Radio is words, words, words. Yes, there were pictures now, but Charlie never abandoned his love affair with words. I happen to have a poetic license. First of all, I don't think what, uh, anything that I do is poetry. I do rhymes. 
When events that are historic, economic, or political reach the point where in the news we speak of them as critical, you have what's called a crisis. We had crises over Vietnam in the decade's early days, and a military crisis called the Crisis Mayaguez, and a crisis known as Watergate that we all saw completed, complete with tapes and sour grapes and expletives deleted. We actually had a death threat in the newsroom. Somebody called up and said, tell Osgood that if he does any more of those stupid poems, I'm gonna kill him. You are my sunshine. There's poetry and the other enduring love of his life, music. When skies are gray. Chuck, back when this explosion of rock and roll took place, you and a handful of other people, but, but mainly you, what was it that caused that to happen? They began to hear it. Even in his office, you can catch Charlie at his keyboards. I don't think most people know that you had a top 40 hit. Well, it's, it's true, though. <laughs> he wrote a tribute to America's fighting forces that was recorded by Senator Everett Dirksen. There have been men. There have been men, bold, gallant men, who have died that others might be free. That others might be free. By January 1967, gallant men had climbed to number 29, one spot above Wild Thing. Charlie has delighted in rubbing elbows with anyone of great talent and passion. Have you ever substituted butter in a recipe? Would you use margarine or something of the sort? I've never used the other spread, nor have I ever mentioned it on the air. <laughs> I just said a bad word. It's a bad word. Through it all, he's remained an old school reporter. Good morning, je suis Charlie. If you have not already heard the sad news, it is our duty this morning to report that Princess Diana is dead. Five days after the terrorist attack, you can see, hear, and feel America rising. Bad news or good, Charlie makes everything seem okay. Maybe it's the bow tie. I have news about your bow tie. The bow tie you are wearing right now is bound for the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History in Washington. Along the way, Charlie Osgood has gained millions of fans from ordinary folks to his peers. Oh, hell, Charles, I can't do this. You're a master at everything you do, including tying a bow tie. Charlie, you have set the gold standard for elegant civility and beautiful storytelling. And nowhere, perhaps, did Charlie's love of words and music come together more memorably than in a British pub during a 1995 report on the 50th anniversary of VE Day. With every parting, there was always the fear that it might be, and the hope that it would not be, the last parting. Maybe that is why the song that Vera Lynn used to sing became an anthem that even to this day can bring tears to the eyes of many an old soldier. We'll meet again, don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. Here's to you, Charlie. Well, <laughs> thank you so much, Bill Small, for the kind words, of course, but also for teaching me so much about news over the years, and for presenting me with this award, with this Lifetime Achievement Award. I am honored, honored indeed. 
Congratulations tonight to the news and documentary Emmys and the nominees, and to 60 Minutes, now celebrating it is its 50th birthday on television. You saw it for yourself how well they did here tonight. And to WCBS News Radio here in New York City, where I first came to work at CBS to fulfill Bill Paley's dream of converting that radio station to an all-news format. That was 50 years ago, too. It was there that I began, and there that you can still see me on the radio. WCBS is where I started, and Sunday morning was my last place of rest at CBS, where I stayed for 22 years. I sometimes wonder, with that much time passed, just how I got so old so fast. <laughs> As everybody in this room knows very well, not all news is good news. A lot of it, maybe most of it, is uh, bad news, sad news. And it's our job to explain to people, to tell them about that, and as clearly and as truthfully as we possibly can. How do we do that? Well, in most cases, we learn from our fellow journalists news professionals, our, our colleagues, of course, most of all, and our competitors as well. In my case, I have been fortunate enough to have the guidance and the mentorship and the friendship of some of the very best in the business, including Walter Cronkite and Harry Reasoner and Charles Corral and Bill Small. I am grateful to CBS for giving me so many opportunities to work with great producers and directors, reporters, and even executives, sometimes. <laughs> As for lifetime achievement, it is true that life is short, but my life continues I'm pleased to report. <laughs> it hasn't expired, and tonight, I'm inspired and proud to be one with you, with all of you here. As for this Emmy, I'm already in touch with her. She's talking to me, and this is the message I hear. Osgood, right now you are age 84. There's no call for bereavements. So get out there and give us some more of those aforementioned achievements. <laughs> Thank you. so much for, for coming and I love you.
Please welcome NBC News correspondent and the anchor of the 2 p.m. hour of MSNBC Live, Katie Turr. It's great to be here with you guys. I'll take a page out of Clarissa's book and just get to it. The nominees for Outstanding News Discussion and Analysis are... All in America, Bernie Sanders in Trump country. All in with Chris Hayes, MSNBC. All in America, the hottest year. All in with Chris Hayes, MSNBC. The hidden city, the last word with Lawrence O'Donnell, MSNBC. An American disaster, the crisis in Flint, the Rachel Maddow show, MSNBC. July 31st, 2016. This week with George Stephanopoulos, ABC. And the Emmy goes to, glad to see it, the American disaster, the crisis in Flint. The Rachel Maddow Show, MSNBC. Accepting the Emmy, Laura Conaway, senior producer. is strong. You all know how strong you are. You are not alone. It took a while. But America is with you now. Flint, Michigan. It is, it is a matter of getting it done, of getting people in place who will do the big things that need to be done to fix this. I am convinced it is going to happen. It is going to be hard, but it has to happen and it will happen because we as a country will not let something like this lie. I presume, Rainy Kale, you're accepting the sword? Oh, no, sorry, we're waiting. I, I jumped the gun, excuse me. Wow, <laughs> that feels surprisingly great. Thank you. Um, Rachel couldn't be here tonight. I think they're actually uh, on the air, just about to be on the air right now. Um, but on behalf of Rachel Maddow and our executive producer, Corey Nazzo, um, first of all, we just want to say thank you to the Emmy judges. Um, we also want to thank uh, Andy Lack, Phil Griffin, Deborah Turness, um, all our colleagues at NBC. I want to thank everyone on the Maddow team people who are here, people who are not able to be here because they're actually making the show right now. Everyone works so hard to put that Flint Town Hall together. And I just want to say that what happened to the people of Flint should never have happened. It really was an American disaster. And the people of Flint, even now, are still working to fix their town. And you see in them every day courage and determination. And we thank them above all for their generosity to us in, um, in showing us what happened to them and in telling us their story. Um, thank you and thank you to the people of Flint. The nominees for Outstanding Current Affair do Affairs Documentary are. Children of Syria, Frontline, PBS. Confronting ISIS, Frontline, PBS. They don't, uh, Only the dead see the end of war, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. The Return, the sounds, POV, PBS. When I what Tomorrow this, Brings, year, POV, I think PBS. And the Emmy goes to... Children of Syria, Frontline, PBS. Accepting the Emmy, Marcel Metalsiphon, director, producer.
اجي لاقرب انا يهددوني بدهم يضربوني يهددوني يضربوا اولادي ما احسن تشوفهم اخذوا قدام عيوني وعم بفشوا بالدرح ما احسن تساوي شيء Thank you very much. It feels a long time ago I did this film. Thank you, Rainy. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Dan, for your support. Thanks for the entire Frontline PBS team for giving me the trust to tell this story. Thank you, Stephen Ellis, who uh, co-produced and helped me in the edit. Without him, this wouldn't be possible. Thank you, Hala, to trust me and to let me f tell you a story for three years, a story which is so important and uh, the world is not getting better and it looks like everything would happen in the last two years is, is just making everything so confusing that uh, Syria is not anymore in the news. Uh, people are still suffering and um, there's so much to do. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you for letting me tell the story. The nominees for Outstanding Music and Sound are... Challenger Disaster, Lost Tapes, National Geographic. A Girl in the River, The Price of Forgiveness, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. This, we are going Sonic this. Sea, Discovery Channel. Sound Breaking, PBS. Symphony of the Soil, PBS. And the Emmy goes to... Envelope's difficult. Sonic Sea, the Discovery Channel. Accepting the Emmy, Daniel Heinerfeld, director, producer. I have always believed from the very beginning of my struggle, my fight, that this, we are going to win this. I have become a grandfather. I'm all the time thinking about who is coming behind us, our children, our grandchildren, and who comes behind them. Thank you so much for this recognition. And thank you to the brave organizations that made Sonic Sea possible. NRDC, Imaginary Forces, IFAW, the Fawcett Family Foundation, and Discovery. Thanks especially to John Hoffman and Mitch Ross. Sonic Sea is a film about sound, about the beautiful sounds that whales and fish use to survive and prosper, and about the horrible sounds that we are putting into the ocean that are destroying life. Our sound team at Sonic Magic plunged the audience beneath the waves. Our wonderful composer, Hator Pereira, played a duet with the ocean. Their artistry is helping to raise awareness and change the world. Thank you. And the nominees for Outstanding Lighting Direction and Scenic Design are... Revenge, Arminius, and Boudicca. Barbarians Rising, History Channel. Battle of Fredericksburg, Blood and Fury, America's Civil War, American Heroes Channel. The 10th Annual CNN Heroes All-Star Tribute, CNN. <laughs> The Hunt with John Walsh, Sex Slaves in Texas, CNN Original Series, CNN. Facing Putin, Facing National Geographic. The Russian state. And the Emmy goes to the 10th Annual CNN Heroes All-Star Tribute. CNN Heroes, CNN. Accepting the Emmy, Kelly Flynn, Senior Executive Producer. Welcome.
Welcome to CNN Heroes and All-Star Tribute. This night is always special as we gather in the Milstein Hall of Ocean Life here at the American Museum of Natural History in New York underneath the enormous whale to honor ordinary women and men who are changing the world. But tonight is extra special, not just because the amazing Kelly Ripa is here as my co-host, but also... Wow, so one of these things is not like the others. Um, Thanks, thanks for the Emmy. Um, I wanted to thank CNN, especially for letting us for 10 to 12 years now highlight stories of people doing amazing work around the world. These stories would be easy to forget now, so I wanted to thank Jeff Zucker and my boss, Michael Bass, for that. But this award really goes to my brilliant, badass director, Renee Cullen, uh, who saw a big dark room <laughs> with a giant whale and said, hey, I can make a really good looking TV show here. Uh, also to Eric Ulfers, Adrian Kapalko at ClickSpring Design, to uh, the nicest guy in the business, Steve Brill at Lighting Design Group, and to my Yoda, Guy Pepper, and the CNN design team who made the beautiful graphics that went on the stage. Thanks. And the nominees for outstanding promotional announcement are Inside the Brain Games, powerful. National Geographic. Nobody knows that I stuck into the chaos. Why we go? Hello. CNN go there. CNN. The 80s CNN original series. CNN. No matter where. The Choice 2016 promo campaign. Frontline. PBS. L.A. Louvre. Riot. And the Emmy goes to Why We Go, CNN. Go there, CNN. Accepting the Emmy, Rick Luchok, Senior Vice President, Creative Marketing and Brand Standards. Hello? No one asks us to go into the chaos. Hello. Into the heartbreak. Welcome. It's the story that drives us forward. Here we have the memo. It's the story that needs to be told. This is why we go. I'll make this the length of a promo, not of a Ken Burns documentary. Um, thank you to the Academy. We're honored for this recognition. This is Whit Freeze. He's my creative partner, uh, and he, took, he was the one who took the simple idea of telling the story of what reporters do every day and bringing it home. And this is Sebastian Knopes, the talented, talented photojournalist who is featured in Why We Go with Nima and Wolf. Sebastian is the emblematic face of the reality journalists face every day. Not long after we shot this promo, Sebastian was seriously injured in Iraq. As you can see, he's well on the men, but it's been a hard journey, and we applaud Sebastian for the hard work he does. And thank you to the talented journalists at CNN. We're proud of the work you do. We're honored to be able to shine the light on your dedication. And thank you to Allison and Jeff for pushing us to do our very best and for giving us the support to get there. Thank you. Before we present our next award, I'd like to introduce the duo who have, who have been acting as our Emmy ambassadors this evening, Sophia Scott of Fordham University and Matthew Layton of Endicott College. They are both surprisingly, even after this, journalism majors. So maybe we'll see you on the other side soon enough. Good luck, guys. Thank you. And the nominees for Outstanding Arts and Culture Documentary are... Bad Sonia Sanchez, America Reframed, World. Meet the Patels, the Patel Independent people. Lens, PBS. Iris, POV, PBS. One day 
day she called me. I'm Thank you for playing POV PBS. Miss Sharon Jones, Stars Digital. And the Emmy goes to. Thank you for playing POV PBS. Accepting the Emmy, Malika Zuhali Worrell, director, producer. Why is that so strange? Why are we all walking around anonymous and not talking about the things that shape the way we are? One of the first things you think about when you're in the hospital with your kid is, uh, I'm surrounded by 500 families going through the same thing, but all the doors are closed. Wow, um, thank you so much. Um, I'm actually accepting this with David, who directed and produced and edited the film alongside me. Um, and we have so many people to thank, um, and I have it written down, luckily. So, um, first of all, POV, um, Simon Kilmurray, uh, Chris White, Justine Nagan, um, who really actually <laughs> believed in the film so early on. Um, everyone at ITVS, um, especially Sally Jo Pfeiffer, who also came on board. Uh, very early on when we were just getting going, um, and, um, and PBS. Um, this film exists because public television exists, and that's so important um, for independent filmmakers like us. Um, we'd also... <laughs> don't have much time. Uh, we'd also like to thank um, Chicken and Egg, um, Firelight Media, and Tribeca Film Institute for supporting the film, and of course, most of all, the team behind That Dragon Cancer, the video game that we, we followed um, in the documentary, and the entire Green family, especially Ryan and Amy, who were so generous and, and gracious with us during such an incredibly hard time in their lives. Um, finally, we wanted to remember Joel Green, who we had the honor to know very briefly. And um, um, this film and now this Emmy are dedicated to him, so thank you very much. The nominees for Outstanding Feature Story in a newscast are... Steps into a high calm, ABC News Digital. ABC. Double arm transplant. CBS This Morning. CBS. Note to self. Vice President Joe Biden. CBS This Morning. CBS. Paying for peace. Nightline. ABC. Friday Night Lights. Vice News Tonight. HBO. And the Emmy goes to Steps into a High Calm, ABC News, Digital ABC. Accepting the Emmy, Molly Hunter, reporter. تجيني هبة الضايق يعني بنخنق إنه أحس بالفرضاء. أتمنى إنه أرجع لسوريا يعني ونكمل عيشتنا فيها يعني. Okay, we're waiting for a couple others. There he is. My partner in crime, Evan Simon, coming up right now. Thank you to ABC, to James, to Ben, to Tom for creating an environment where a half an hour documentary on Syrian refugees in those 17 grueling days from Syria to Germany would actually see the light of day and win something like this. To these guys, to my digital team, to my partner in crime, Evan, I'm, I'm so excited. Um, to Engin, to our team in Turkey, to our team in Syria who found this incredible family. Every single Syrian family I met throughout this journey wanted a better life for their children. They were going for their children. The parents knew that their life wasn't going to be easy when they got to Germany, that they were not going to learn the language quickly enough, they were not going to get their old jobs. 
but their kids sure as hell would have a better life. And these parents knew that. Uh, Germany welcomed this family. Any country would be really lucky to have the Hillel family uh, as citizens, and I'm so proud of the work that we have done. So thank you. Um, the nominees for Outstanding Breaking News coverage are... Nightclub Massacre, Terror in Orlando, Christine, ABC News Special Events, so ABC. Pulse Nightclub Massacre, Anderson Cooper 360, CNN. Battle for Mosul, CNN. Terror in Brussels. Today and news specials, NBC. Coverage of the Pulse nightclub shooting, The Washington Post. And the Emmy goes to... Nightclub Massacre, Terror in Orlando, ABC News special events, ABC. Accepting the Emmy, Mark Burstein, Senior Executive Producer. Please let's all just get along. We're on this earth for such a short time. Let's try to get rid of the hatred and the violence, please. Christine, your words are so powerful this morning. Yeah. It's so clear your heart is breaking. Thank you. When the phone rings on a Saturday night late, like it did in June of 2016, just to report that there's been a shooting in a nightclub in Orlando, or like five nights ago, when the phone rings in the middle of the night to say that there's been a shooting at a hotel in Las Vegas, the entire news division mobilizes immediately. And it's, it's truly an amazing sight to behold. So this award really is for all of the men and women at ABC News. And while it's an honor to be recognized by one's peers, and we thank you for this honor, I think I speak for everyone in this room when I say that let's hope that no one is standing up here next year accepting another award for another massacre and another shooting. Thank you. Thank you. Now, to present the International Emmy Awards for News and Current Affairs, is the president and CEO of the International Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Bruce Paisner. I'm proud to be here tonight as we come together to honor the outstanding work of broadcast journalists from around the world. For a number of years, the International Academy has joined with our U.S. Academy colleagues in presenting Emmys for news coverage. But the need has never been so urgent. The Emmy enables us and the general public to recognize and appreciate great work. It provides a line of defense against governments that would hamper or indeed shut down that work. The phrase fake news, all too often a new favorite line of attack by government officials on stories they just don't like, is not merely an insult, but a way of discrediting the very protections the press is supposed to have and must have if it is to perform its function in a democracy. Without government protection, there is not much the press can do to protect itself. But one thing we can do is to report and, by extension, recognize bravery and courage in gathering these stories. 
So tonight, as we present Emmys for outstanding achievement in news and current affairs coverage from around the world, we are reminded in a way we have not been for some time of the importance of these awards. The nominees for the International Emmy Award for News are From the United Kingdom, Inside Aleppo, ITN Channel 4 News. From Brazil, Jornal Nacional, The Ryan Lochte Scandal, TV Globo. From Israel, Le Journal Paris Jaffa, Republican National Convention, Cleveland, I-24 News. From the Philippines, TV Patrol, Super Typhoon Loween's Trail of Damage, ABS-CBN. And the Emmy goes to Inside Aleppo, the battle for Aleppo. Accepting the Emmy, Ben DePere, editor. In a city that has sent out so many images of death, it is the picture of a five-year-old carried out alive that has so captured Aleppo's agony. A tiny child alone in the back of an ambulance trying to work out what has happened. There should be two more colleagues joining me. Uh, I don't know where they are. Are, they, are, they, are you coming? <laughs> yeah, here they are. Uh, this is a huge honor and a, a acknowledgement for us at Channel 4 News. This is the third time we've won uh, this award in six years for our coverage of Syria. But this is really the most incredible uh, award we've won. There's a woman sitting there who can't come on stage because uh, her, her life and that of her family are still threatened. She, she did the filming in Aleppo for us over nine months. For six of those months, she was pregnant. And she was also looking after a one-year-old child. Uh, I, I, I cannot praise this woman enough. She's the bravest person who's ever worked for Channel 4 News. Uh, and she's also the most instinctive filmmaker we've ever had. Uh, she was handled by a team of people. Two of them are here, Matt Fry, Fede, uh, Fede Escher. Uh, in London, there was Naveen Mabro and Teresa Smith. There's a whole cast of people. Uh, we were speaking to uh, Wad every day. Uh, we, got, we got annoyed with her because she wouldn't leave Aleppo. She stayed till the end because she wanted to know that everyone she was with would, would get out with her. Uh, and she got out and um, we're, we're, uh, amazingly, not only did she get out of Aleppo, but the United States let her in today to come for this uh, Emmy ceremony. So to this, good things. I'm going to, I'll be very brief now. I said to her just before this happened, I said, look, you might not win. And she said, man, it's okay. Uh, I lost my home. I lost my city. I lost the whole of the country. So I can, I can handle this. <laughs> um, she, did, she did want me to say some words on her behalf. This is from Wad. People in Aleppo did not fight to win. They fought not to lose their rights. The people in Aleppo lost and we had to leave but they still fight for dignity and freedom from outside. This award proves the suffering of Syrians, which still goes on in Idlib, Dara, and around Damascus, will not go um, un unheeded. The hell continues in Syria. Please do not forget us. I'd like to pay tribute again to Wad and say thank you very much to her and everyone who was in Aleppo. Thank you.
The nominees for the International Emmy Award for Current Affairs are From Malaysia, 101 East, Rodrigo Duterte, a President's Report Card, Al Jazeera English. From the United Kingdom, Exposure, Saudi Arabia Uncovered, Hard Cash Productions, ITV, WGBH Frontline. From Brazil, Globo Reporte, Art as Passport, TV Globo. From Sweden, Mission Investigate, The Panama Papers, SVT, ICIJ, Zedeutsche Zeitung, Reykjavik Media. And the International Emmy goes to Exposure, Saudi Arabia Uncovered. Accepting the Emmy, James Jones, producer, director. Our undercover cameraman, Yasser, has been filming for us at great risk. He and his network are trying to reveal the other side of our close ally. Saudi Arabia doesn't allow tourists, and they don't allow journalists to operate without minders. Thank you so much. Um, this really means a lot to us um, and to the many Saudis who we worked with. Um, got a few thank yous. Uh, first of all, to the people who are brave enough to commission the film. Uh, Tom Giles at ITV, uh, Rainey Aronson, Dan Edge, and Andrew Metz at, at Frontline. Uh, and David Henshaw from Hardcast Productions, who I've never known to shy away from a fight, no matter how tough uh, the target, the opponent. Uh, but most importantly, to the many Saudis who took incredible risks to make this film possible. Uh, this Emmy really belongs to the brave men, uh, and especially the women uh, who are working so hard to bring about change in that country, um, and finally having some success. So thank you to them, and thank you to you. Here to introduce the recipient of the annual Mike Wallace Memorial Scholarship is Emmy Award-winning journalist and Senior Vice President of News Administration at CBS News, Ingrid Cyprian Matthews. Hi, good evening, everybody. The Mike Wallace Scholarship, Memorial Scholarship, is presented in the name of our late colleague and broadcasting legend. Mike's work for 60 Minutes inspired generations of journalists, and his impact on our industry remains strong today. Each year, this scholarship presents one bright young journalist with $10,000 to continue working on their craft. And this year's honoree is Nancy Pickett of Golden, Goldenrod, Florida. Nancy's a young documentarian who recently saw the premiere of her first feature-length film, which profiles pediatric cancer patients. But it was her courageous work in which she used her own chronic illness to look at the impact of the Affordable Care Act that led to her being here tonight. It is difficult to watch this piece and not be moved by her tenacity as she navigates the healthcare system to get treatment. Let's take a look at her. If an insurance company was allowed to say that they're not going to cover my gastroparesis just because I was diagnosed at 15, that would make, leave me paying out of pocket for my feeding tube, my central line, my TPN, most of my meds, and it would really start to add up. Even if I went into liver failure from being on IV nutrition, they could still relate that back to gastroparesis since that's the reason I was on TPN in the first place. I could get coverage for a mammogram to prevent breast cancer, but I couldn't get coverage from the disease that I'm actually suffering from. Nancy is attending Chapman University.
On behalf of all of us, thank you so much for sharing your story, Nancy. Thank you. We're sure there's a lot of great journalism in your future. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Wow, um, I'm so thankful for the Academy for allowing me the opportunity to uh, further my education at Dodge, at Chapman, um, such an amazing school. I have to especially thank my parents for uh, always supporting me and wanting to go into this field. My incredible broadcast teachers, Ms. Lori Farber and Michelle Gerber, um, my amazing care team at Arnold Palmer Hospital for Children and all the friends who've supported me. Thank you so much, I hope to be back here again soon. Now, to present the two awards for outstanding regional reporting is the senior correspondent for New York's WABC-TV and the first vice chairman of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, N.J. Burkett, and the senior correspondent for WPIX-TV, the host of PIX News Close Up, Marvin Scott. Thank you, good evening everyone. N.J. and I are here as representatives of the Natus Board and of the New York chapter. It's one of 19 around the country that award television excellence at the station level. Now, many of you, if not most of you, have come from the local ranks, and it is our privilege tonight to be here to honor some excellent work. In case you need that, Marvin. Thank you. Investigative reporting is the beating heart of journalism. And in local television and on the web, it is beating stronger than ever. After years of cutbacks, investigative reporting in America's cities and towns is making a comeback. Look no further than the extraordinary work we honor here tonight. A state hospital in Arizona looking the other way on patient sex abuse. Psychiatric hospitals in Florida warehousing dangerous patients and covering it up. A six-month investigation into opioid addiction in Philadelphia and the wreckage left behind. A government scheme to deny veterans with traumatic brain injuries the medical benefits they deserved. And finally, school administrators in Texas allowing predatory teachers to resign and get new jobs quietly in other districts. So in the category Outstanding Regional News Investigative Report, the nominees are. Committed to Secrecy, ABC 15 Arizona, KNXV Phoenix, Generation Addicted, NBC 10, WCAU Philadelphia, Insane, Invisible, In Danger, Tampa Bay Times, Sarasota Herald Tribune, Invisible Wounds, CARE TV News, KARE Minneapolis St. Paul, Passing the Trash, News 8 at 10 p.m., WFAA Dallas. Okay, and the award goes to Generation Addicted, NBC 10, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, WCAU TV. Accepting the Emmy, Vince Latanzio, reporter, producer. <laughs> Despite seeing his friends die and watching that woman overdose just 20 minutes before, Michael still went down to the tracks to shoot up, even knowing that our camera was rolling. Take the needle, you get about 25, 30 cc's of water. What's going through your head right now when you're getting ready to do this? Um. I'm about to feel great. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. So uh, thank you to everybody at NBC10. This is a digital project that actually moved to television, so it was a great opportunity for multi-platform. Uh, so everybody uh, on the digital team and the broadcast team creative services. And it seems like forever ago that we worked on this project. And while we were working on it, people were telling us that this epidemic was only going to get worse. And unfortunately, it has. So we want to dedicate this award to the people who shared their stories with us in their worst moments and during their times of triumph. So thank you to Michael, Angel, Patty, 
Blake, Rodney, Carol, Bo, Devin, Laura, Jose, Brian, and all the men and women who are using this are using their help every single day to help people in this crisis. And Michael, who you saw in that video, uh, after we did our report, his mom pushed him into rehab, and he's more than a year in recovery. So congratulations to him. Thank you. Congratulations, nice work. You know, it's no secret that we all are here tonight at a troubling time in our honorable profession when public trust in the media sadly has eroded to its lowest level. Much of it is being fueled by the inaccuracy and the bias of social media where 67% of Americans say they get their news. And that has left too many, too many skeptical of the credibility of the information which they're getting, and it generates much of the so-called fake news that our critics refer to in their attacks on mainstream media, that is us. I challenge anyone to call what we are honoring here tonight alternative facts or fake news. While it does please me tonight to be here to join all of you in honoring the best of journalism, it saddens me that our critics aren't here to witness firsthand how wrong they are and to applaud with us the best of what we do. And we are seeing the best tonight. And perhaps the best of what we do is exemplified in the reporting live on the scene as we're witnessing right now after the hurricane and what's going on in Las Vegas and what happens and they call that Spot News. The nominees for Outstanding Regional News Story, Spot News, are... A violation of the law. 10 News, KGTV San Diego. Angeles del Desierto, Noticias Telemundo Corenta, KTLM Rio Grande City, Texas. Flooding and Fire, WDRB-TV News, WDRB Louisville, G.I. Joe Found Dead, WLS-TV News, WLS Chicago, Tribeca Crane Collapse, WNBC-TV News, WNBC New York. And the winner for Outstanding Regional News Story, Spot News, The award goes to Angeles del Deserto Noticeras Telemundo 40. Accepting the award, Jorge Vinales, reporter. En donde encontraron un gap, una, una puerta abierta muy grande. Eh, caminaron aproximadamente unos 10 minutos también y llegaron a lo que es un lago. Lago, el cual recorrimos con dicha organización y en cuestión de minutos hicimos un hallazgo. Ahí está. Well, first of all, it's such an honor to be here in front of people we admire so much. We did this story while we were working in the Rio Grande Valley in Texas. And we want to thank our station there, Telemundo 40, also an organization, Angeles del Desierto, who helps the families of undocumented immigrants to find peace. And we're talking about immigrants that disappear while crossing the border. Thank you to my family, to our loved ones. Thank you so much. Thank you. Please welcome the chairman of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, Chuck Dages. On behalf of the Board of Trustees and our National Awards Committee, it is my honor to preside over these 38 annual News and Documentary Emmy Awards. I would like to thank our New York-based staff our news division, led by Senior Vice President David Wynn, Director Christine Chen, and of course our President Bob Morrow for making tonight's event such a success. In addition, I would like to thank our sponsor, United Airlines. 
It is the official airline of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, and we thank them for their support. We gather here tonight to honor the men and women of television news and documentary. Tonight's esteemed nominees are a reflection of the high level of television reporting that marks this year's many entries. And we thank all of the judges that worked on this, that determined this year's honorees. This evening, the Academy is happy to celebrate two great milestones, as we've seen in our television industry. The incredible career of Charles Osgood, and journalist and anchor of CBS Sunday Morning, and the 50th season of the iconic news program, 60 Minutes. It's a remarkable feat. In closing, let's take a moment to recognize those news professionals and documentarians who have departed from us in this past year, but who have left behind a work that we can all still aspire to, and that we will always be remembered. Let's take a look. He's a former military fighter pilot, retired astronaut, and U.S. Navy captain. He's also a veteran of four space flights, including the year-long mission to the International Space Station. Please welcome Scott Kelly. Good evening. It's a privilege to be a part of this special night and an honor to be in the company of such accomplished storytellers. Having just written my first book, I know how hard it is to tell people a story that will keep them engaged, excited, and keep them with you until the end, especially when it's a true story like those represented here tonight. And sometimes these true stories are the hardest to tell because much like a space mission, while you plan for where the journey will take you, you're never 100% sure of what's going to happen along the way. But maybe it's that sense of the unknown that keeps both storytellers and astronauts going. The nominees for Outstanding Social Issue Documentary are... Christina Chasing Heroin, Frontline, PBS. Policing the Police. Frontline, PBS. The Armor of Light, Independent Lens, PBS. Autism in Love, Independent Lens, PBS. Southwest of Salem, the story of the San Antonio Four, Investigation Discovery. And the Emmy goes to the Armor of Light, Independent Lens, PBS. Accepting the Emmy, Abigail Disney, 
director. Jesus never advocated violence. Despite how bad it gets, we're never to advocate violence, ever. Particularly with the Stand Your Ground law, you do everything you possibly can to retreat before you use that violence. I'm so not putting this down. I'm a little in shock right now. And there they are, yay, the balcony. Oh, I did not expect this. I am putting it down. Okay, I brought a list because um, I forgot Jenny the last time and I'm not doing that again. So I just first have to thank all of these people here who I am useless without. <laughs> Natasha Matola, Alf Hyde, Stephanie Palumbo, Eva Asenko, Ginny Redeker, my co-director Kathy Hughes, and Andy Fredericks' is miraculous, miraculous editor. Um, also not here is Jeff Hutchins, our DP, who was amazing, and everyone at Fork Films and Pieces Loud, also at PBS, Beth Hoppe and Marie Nelson, Lois Vossen, Sally Jo Pfeiffer, and more than anything, um, Reverend Rob Shank, who was brave enough to change on camera, John Phillips, and the wonderful Lucy McBath, and all of our pa very patient families. I want to dedicate this to the people of Las Vegas, um, and especially to Jordan um, Davis, who um, unfortunately can't live the rest of his life the way he should have been able to. We are drowning in weapons, and it is very uh, easy to point the finger at the NRA, and I would agree with you if you did, but there's more to it than that. It's deeper, it's broader, it's a national love affair, and, uh, and as members of the media, I think we all need to take responsibility um, to find ways to tell better stories, to stop romanticizing the weapons, and tell the stories of peace. Um, peace is a hard story to tell, but it's as compelling. Um, so the problem's also at our doorstep, and, uh, and so I think we should all challenge ourselves to find a better way through this. If we don't bring a moral framework to this conversation and get out of the weeds about this law or that law, uh, we'll never find a way out of this horrible horrible hellscape we've, we've built for ourselves. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. The nominees for outstanding continuing coverage of a news story in a newscast are The Road to Aleppo, CBS Evening News with Scott Pelley, CBS. Hooked, America's Opioid Epidemic, NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt, NBC. Philippines Drug War, Vice News Tonight, HBO. Retaking Mosul, Vice News Tonight, HBO. Nightclub Massacre, Terror in Orlando. Hopefully World News Tonight with David Muir and Nightline, ABC. And the Emmy goes to Retaking Mosul, Vice News Tonight, HBO. Accepting the Emmy, Seb Walker, correspondent. It's likely to be messy. Reports of soldiers torturing prisoners already beginning to emerge. This man was accused of being with a group of ISIS fighters killed in an airstrike. He was about to be taken for questioning. Thanks very much, thanks to the Academy. Thank you to everyone at HBO for the support you've given us. Thanks to everyone at Vice, the executives, Josh Tarangil, Madeline Herringer, Shane Smith, everyone on the team, Adam, producer of these uh, films, everyone on the international team. 
Um, everyone at Vice, this award's for you. This is dedicated to the journalists who covered this assault and were wounded and killed um, in the course of that. So thank you very much. The nominees for Outstanding Hard News Feature Story in a newscast are Chicago's Deadly Streets, BBC World News America, BBC World News. 28 hours surrounded by ISIS. Early start with John Berman and Christine Romans, CNN. Gangland, Nightline, ABC. Law and disorder in the Philippines. The Nightline, the moment, ABC. The rise of carfentanil. Like, Vice News Tonight, HBO. Said, no, Gangland. Nightline, ABC. Accepting the Emmy, Jenna Millman. Senior producer. This grieving mother is holding a wake for her 17 year old son, Alexis, murdered by gangs just last night. And right in the middle of the service. Dan couldn't be here. He's on assignment, but he's, he's sad he couldn't be here. Uh, thank you to our little team who dedicated a lot of time and energy to this, to Adam, who captured almost every shot of it and put his life on the line to get the story, and to Shilpi, who I think might be on her way to the stage, who wove it together in the edit room, um, to Roxana for supporting the story from the beginning, to James and Tom and Ben for giving us the space at Nightline to do this, and uh, most importantly, to the families in El Salvador who trusted us with their story, and to our fixer, Rafael Mejia, who really did put his life on the line to get us every frame of this. Thank you. The nominees for outstanding coverage of a breaking news story in a news magazine are Massacre in the Nightclub, Terror in Orlando, 2020, so many ABC. No idea yet. Bringing a nation together, 48 hours, CBS. Muhammad Ali, remembering a legend, 48 hours, CBS. Battle for Mosul, 60 Minutes, CBS. The Bastille Day attack, Dateline NBC, NBC. And the Emmy goes to Battle for Mosul, 60 Minutes, CBS. Accepting the Emmy, Laura Logan. We were in Mosul with an Iraqi Special Operations Brigade Mulazim Ahmed, Akushu. as they met ISIS head on. It's not like a regular army they're fighting. This is, en masse, a suicidal army. On the front lines, we saw what the fight is likely to look like. Thank you very, very much um, to everybody here this evening. There isn't a journalist in this room who doesn't know how difficult it's been to cover Syria and Iraq. And uh, when I sit here, I always see all the stories I wish I'd done. This story was many years in the making, and our team in Iraq, uh, for us, Ibrahim al Samurai, uh, is really the, the mainstay of all of our coverage for many, many years. And, uh, and he and I first interviewed Major Salam when he graduated from his uh, first course for the CTS. And, uh, 
And I'm sorry that we weren't there in Ramadi when he fought for two years and in one explosion lost 17 soldiers. It took three days to dig their bodies out of the front line. So uh, by the time he got to Mosul, no one really understood why he was still alive. So uh, this Emmy is honestly for um, all of my colleagues who uh, every step along the way, you know we've helped each other get here. We all believe in the same things and we fight for the same thing. And thank you to uh, my bosses at 60 Minutes and my team, Richard Butler and Scott Monroe and Jeff Mabley, our security person, and uh, Max McClellan, our producer, uh, one of the best ever. Uh, Max, this is for you. Our next three categories honor some of the more innovative journalism being delivered online and over the airwaves today. The nominees for new approaches, arts, lifestyle, and culture are... Vagina Dispatches, Guardian US. The Forger, The New York Times. The Voter Suppression Trail, The New York Times. The Click Effect, The New York Times and Annapurna Pictures. Who Me, Biased, The New York Times and POV. And the Emmy goes to The Forger, The New York Times, The New York Times. Accepting the Emmy, Adam Ellick, Director of Opinion Video. Fallait que je reste éveillé le plus longtemps possible. Lutter contre le sommeil. Le calcul était simple. En une heure, je fabriquais 30 faux papiers. Si je dormais une heure. This is a tireless and incredibly creative team behind me. Alex uh, Garcia, Pamela Druckerman, Samantha Stark, Tage Jensen, and we'd also like to thank Manual Cinema. Our film honors a 92-year-old Frenchman who still lives in Paris today. From the age of 17, he's been forging documents to help people, including himself, flee persecution. After World War II, he continued making forgeries to help people across Asia, Latin America, and Africa. I believe his story resonates more today than ever as we see record highs in refugees. His life purpose was very simple. People matter more than borders. And if you can help people, you must do it. Thank you for honoring his story. The nominees for Outstanding New Approaches, Current News are... Deforestation in the Amazon Info Guide, Council on Foreign Relations. My four months as a private prison guard, Mother Jones. A bullet could hit me and my kids anytime, The New York Times. Carbon's Casualties, The New York Times. The Fight for Fallujah, The New York Times. And the Emmy goes to Deforestation in the Amazon Info Guide, Council on Foreign Relations. Accepting the Emmy, Jeremy Sherlick, Deputy Director for Multimedia. should do that from, from now on. Uh, this is our, our fourth uh, Emmy Award. Um, and I, I just wanted to s s just thank people, but I also wanted to say this is a 
This is an uh, incredibly important topic that we chose uh, to cover, and um, it's a global strategy. Um, and uh, I just wanted to start thanking some people. And, and first, uh, I want to thank um, the council and uh, our president, Richard Haas, for believing us and supporting us all these years on these kind of projects. Um, I want to thank um, Carnegie Corporation for providing the, the uh, funding for, the, for this important work. Um, uh, just starting to list off some people, uh, Doug Halsey, our, our um, Chief Digital Officer, um, thank you. Um, Hagit Ariav, um, uh, Bob McMahon, who can't be here today, Jackie Mint, um, our incredible designer and developer, um, some uh, other people who are here, I don't know if they're making their way down, but um, uh, Christian Wallen, uh, our product manager, and uh, Lisa Ortiz, our, um, our director of design. Amazing work, uh, everyone. Um, we also had a sound designer, Adam Parrish King. Um, so thank you, everyone. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Very much. The nominees for Outstanding New Approaches documentary are... What? Collisions, Jaunt VR. A Bear's Eye View of Yellowstone, National Geographic. Behind the Fence, Huffington Post, Riot. A New Age of Walls, The Washington Post. Obama's Legacy, The Washington Post. And the Emmy goes to Collisions, Jaunt VR. Accepting the Emmy, Lynette Walworth, director. I happened to mention that I had been to Maralinga where Britain tested nuclear bombs in the 1950s. One of the women turned to me and said, you have to talk to Neri. Neri Morgan, a Madhu man, was walking around in the desert when Britain was testing nuclear bombs. Thank you. Um, thanks so much. It's um, wonderful to be here in this category. Neri saw what he thought was the spirits of his land rising up in the 1950s. That was the only way he could interpret a vision that he hadn't seen before. It was a nuclear test. And he waited over 50 years to tell that story beyond his family. I thought he waited for this technology, for a technology that let you feel inside a headset that you were standing where he stood and you were seeing kangaroos fly about your feet and seeing your water holes boil. But now I think he also was waiting for another moment, one that when we made the film, we didn't think we would be in where another nuclear standoff is on our doorstep. So I thank him for his patience and his wisdom. I thank producer Nicole Newtonham and Patrick from Jaunt. I thank Nico Daswani from the World Economic Forum in the cultural program who invited this work to be made and the Sundance New Frontier, wonderful women, Shari Frilo, Kamal Sinclair, who have supported me for many years. And along with them, 
creating the residency that allowed this work to be made, was a group of astounding women belonging to different foundations who all decided that this technology and this story deserve to be funded. And I want to thank them. Sandy Hertz, Cara Mertes, Gigi Pritzker, Corey Stern, Amanda Duthie, and Diana Barrett. You made this happen for us, and we are so thankful. The nominees for Outstanding Live Interview are... You didn't say anything. Trump accusers speak out with Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper 360, CNN. Pam Bondi interview with Anderson Cooper, CNN Newsroom, CNN. Face to Face, an exclusive interview with Syria's President Assad. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt, NBC. One-on-one -on -one with Kellyanne Conway, The Rachel Maddow Show, MSNBC. Holes, all of them. Brianna Keller's interview with Trump's legal counsel, Mike Cohen. The Situation Room with Wolf Blitzer, CNN. And the Emmy goes to one-on-one -on -one with Kellyanne Conway, The Rachel Maddow Show, MSNBC. Accepting the Emmy, Laura Conaway, senior producer. Steve Bannon has been not just a provocateur on the right, not just a controversial guy. He specifically set his sights on trying to destroy Paul Ryan. He's after He's after John McCain, he's after Paul Ryan. He, he, he stood up and cheered about John Boehner and about Eric Cantor, the way that he celebrated Eric Cantor losing his seat. I understand if you're a Republican insurgent, why that must be very exciting. I'm told they're coming. Wow. Well, uh, thank you again. Um, I just want to say that uh, one of the things about these interviews is, you know, you're sending one host out onto the wire, but um, I think I can speak for the whole team and anybody who's ever prepped for one of these interviews, it really takes an army um, to get ready. And so, again, I want to thank our leadership at the network, uh, Andy Lack, Phil Griffin, uh, for giving us the tools and the resources to make it happen. Um, I want to thank everybody on the Maddo team who worked so hard. And I think it's also worth noting that um, Kellyanne Conway, in particular, really stands out for being willing to go on TV and take tough questions and engage in tough arguments. And our whole system of governance and democracy depends on that kind of robust debate and interchange of ideas. And uh, we can all hope for more of it. Thank you very much. To help celebrate the 50th season of 60 Minutes, here is a message from the chairman and CEO of CBS Corporation, Les Moonves. Good evening, and congratulations to all the Emmy nominees and winners. On this special night, one program stands out, 60 Minutes. I think we have all watched 60 Minutes for most of our lives and have always admired it. Of course, I never imagined that I would have the privilege of belonging to the same storied company as 60 Minutes. Much has changed in our society since it got its start, but at its core, the broadcast still remains the same. The same investigative spirit, 
the same quality, the same dedication to the truth. Those qualities are as important today as they were 50 years ago. 50 seasons on the air, an unprecedented feat in prime time. And all these years later, 60 is still a solid hit for the CBS television network and the crown jewel of our news division. So many people need to be thanked. Don Hewitt, who built it, Jeff Fager, who has guided it into a new age, and of course, all the wonderful correspondents, producers, crew, and staff who are so critical to its success. In our ever-changing media world, you could ask, how has 60 kept its integrity and remained essential to all of us? I think the answer is simple. It's just terrific television. Over the years, there have been so many unforgettable moments. 60 Minutes will celebrate some of those in a broadcast next month to commemorate its golden anniversary. Here's a peek at that hour. And once again, from all of us at CBS, congratulations to all of you at 60 Minutes. Good evening. This is 60 Minutes. Really? Aha. Uh -huh. Where did it come from? It's a kind of a magazine for television. Congressman? Yes, sir. Steve Croft from 60 Minutes. What? No, I don't want to do 60 Minutes. You want to just get right over here. I'd like you to get out of here. Let's stop the interview for a minute. Will she come out and talk to us? No. Answer some questions. Dr. Eklund, I'm Scott Pelley with 60 Minutes. Oh, great. I want to ask you about the tweeting. You're not very popular in the country right now, to be frank. I wonder, I'm does that... you're right. I don't care what they say. I should, probably shouldn't say that on TV. <laughs> Mr. President, I, I, look, they're not happy with the way you're doing your job. This is a tough business. Why is it taking so long? Right here, across the bridge, you can see the black flag of ISIS. So this is what you can expect in Mosul? Yes. Most people think you are the face of evil. What did I do wrong? And I'm going to jail for that? Only the bad ones go to jail. Only the stupid ones go to jail. You must have known. I trusted him. Ali! Hamilton certainly changes my life. Want to talk about Zach? It's not 60 swinging minutes. Good drive. <laughs> Go! Whoa! How did you get around that? Well, that's a damn good question. You have no problem asking that question. No, I'm asking because I'm seeking an answer. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Really? Seriously. How do you do that? That's an excellent question. I know it is. What's the answer? 60 minutes. 60 minutes. 60 minutes. 60 minutes. That is being on 60 minutes. I'm Mike Wallace. I'm Harry Reasoner. I'm Morley Safer. I'm Dan Rather. I'm Ed Bradley. I'm Diane Sawyer. I'm Steve Croft. I'm Meredith Vieira. I'm Leslie Stahl. I'm Bob Simon. I'm Scott Pelley. I'm Katie Couric. I'm Charlie Rose. I'm Lara Logan. I'm Anderson Cooper. I'm Oprah Winfrey. I'm Bill Whitaker. Tonight, 50 years of 60 Minutes. Honest. Honest. That's the truth. Please welcome the president of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, Bob Morrow. Earlier this evening, we found out that Patrick Lee was a great editor, but he was also a mind reader because he took one of my lines out of my speech right now. At a very young age, Don Hewitt and I used to share coffee and read five newspapers. Those of you in the room that are under the age of I don't know what, those are things where you used to get information every morning and you would read them and plan your day journalistically. He said to me, Bobby, I'm gonna give you a piece of advice. You always wanna be the dumbest guy in the room. And for Don Hewitt to say that, it was amazing. He was a humble guy. He was a great guy. 
And in this day and age of constant employment turnover, to have two people lead one of the premier broadcasts in the history of known mankind is amazing. It comes down to great leadership. And it's my great honor right now to introduce the next guy who got the torch, Jeff Fager. I'm not going to hand this to Jeff because it's too damn heavy and I almost dropped it earlier today, but the inscription reads from the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, 50 years of unmatched journalistic excellence. Jeff. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. I love that tape. It's the top of our special, which is uh, the work of Warren Lustig. So amazing. Congratulations, first of all, to Charlie Osgood and Rand in Sunday morning turning 40, and to Z, Susan Zerinsky, and 48 Hours turning 30. Those are huge achievements as well. We're all proud at CBS News of them. You know, 60 Minutes, uh, one consistent trait has been the collection of fine and talented broadcast journalists going all the way back and the, all the people that started 60 Minutes are gone now. They're all gone. But the Academy would like to recognize everybody who's here, and you've seen a number of them come up tonight. All of you, please, from 60 Minutes, stand to be recognized. Thank you. <laughs> and congratulations. Thanks, everybody, very much. Thank you. Good night. Please welcome to the stage our next presenter, ABC News correspondent Gio Benitez. Good evening, such an honor to be here. It's time to switch up the languages just a bit. We're gonna do the Emmys now in Espanol, all right? So, the nominees for outstanding coverage of a breaking news story in Spanish are... La Recaptura de El Chapo, aquí y ahora, Univision. DACA DAPA La Batalla Final, Noticias Telemundo, Telemundo. Decisión el 2016, La Batalla Final, Noticias Telemundo, Telemundo. El Chapo, Noticias Telemundo, Telemundo. La Gran Batalla, Noticias Telemundo, Telemundo. And the Emmy goes to La Recaptura del Chapo, aquí y ahora, Univision. Accepting the Emmy, Maria Elena Salinas. Como pueden ver en estas dos fotografías hay un parecido en el estilo de decoración de ambas habitaciones que muestran estas fotos. La segunda es realmente del Hotel Dux y podría confirmar que la primera es real, aunque todavía no se confirma su autenticidad. Es que claro, el, el Chapo aparece en unas fotos esposado y en otras aparece sin estar esposado. Thank you so much. You know, that's actually our newscast, which is also nominated for El Chapo coverage. And I guess it's El Chapo, El Chapo, who's the gift that keeps on, keeps on giving. Uh, we've all become experts on El Chapo Guzman. And, you know, this notorious drug dealer was arrested again for the third time. And our correspondents were digging into every possible uh, angle, you know, capturing this notorious killer, as we know, is something that 
a government could be proud of. But when you capture him for the third time, then that means he escaped twice, and that's not something to be proud of. That is corruption in the government. So, thank you very much. This is a very special award. Congratulations for Telemundo for four very good shows that were nominated in this, in this category. And thanks, of course, to my colleagues, my co-anchor Jorge Ramos, my co-anchor also Ana Quillaura, Teresa Rodriguez, who is in Las Vegas right now together with our amazing team of journalists. Thank you so much. The nominees for Outstanding Investigative Journalism in Spanish are... Panama Papers. Aquí y ahora, Univision Investiga. Univision and the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. Deportation Inc. The Industry of Fear. Aquí y ahora, Univision Investiga, Univision. Colombia, a country divided by the scars of war. Conclusiones, CNN en Español. Latinación, La Huella Hispania en Estados Unidos, Univision. Cosecha de Miseria, Harvest of Misery, Noticias Telemundo, The Weather Channel, Weather.com, and Efron Films. And the Emmy goes to Cosecha de Miseria, Harvest of Misery, Noticias Telemundo, The Weather Channel, Weather.com, and Efron Films and Telemundo. Accepting the Emmy, Marisa Venegas, Executive Producer, Producer. Pero después de recibir varias denuncias, mi colega John Carlos Frey y yo, Mónica Villamizar, hemos llegado a la ciudad de Tapachula, cerca de la frontera con Guatemala, a investigar si es cierto que las condiciones de trabajo en algunos cafetales tienen un lado oscuro. Casi enseguida empezamos a ver escenas en la carretera que chocan con la imagen de un supuesto comercio justo. Thank you so much. Most of you know uh, who know me know that I really don't like to speak in public, but I am deeply grateful to Telemundo and to my colleagues at the Weather Channel and at Efren Films for allowing us to make this very important film about children, very small children, picking coffee, the coffee that we pay premium prices for uh, every day, and uh, we're happy to do. And these kids are carrying bags of 100 pounds on their backs. And um, anyway, thank you so much, and thank you to many of my mentors who are in this room right now, Zerinsky, and you guys, thank you. And the nominees for Outstanding Feature Story in Spanish are... La Amazonia, Un Paraíso a la Venta, Univision. Orlando Recobra el Pulso, Univision News Digital, Univision. Sobrevivirán las mariposas monarca congeladas en México, Univision News Digital. Univision. Una Odisea Cubana. Univision News Digital. Univision. Viviendo a la sombra de un pozo petrolero. Univision News Digital. Univision. And the Emmy goes to La Amazonia, un paraíso a la venta. Univision. Accepting the Emmy, Laura Fernandez, producer. Aquí pasamos por encima de la gente, de la cultura, de la selva. 
empresas de turismo que traen en un día a una comunidad 200, 300 personas. Imagínate quién está preparado para eso. Ah, this is really exciting. I want to thank the Academy and the production team that was part of the story. Enrique, Alejandro, José, Federico, María Gabriela, Alejandro, Nicolás, everyone, Univision. Um, having witnessed firsthand the recent chain of natural disasters, our story stands as a powerful reminder of the importance to preserve and protect nature. And without a healthy, healthy Amazon, we cannot have a healthy planet. Thank you. And the nominees for Outstanding Newscast or News Magazine in Spanish are Al Rojo Vivo, Telemundo. Aquí y Ahora, Univision. Noticiero Telemundo, Telemundo. Noticiero Univision, Univision. Oppenheimer presenta CNN en Español. And the Emmy goes to... Aquí y ahora, Univision. Accepting the Emmy, María Elena Salinas. Más huellas de los impactos que se estaban registrando. Aquí, pólvora y otro golpe. La cocina y el comedor eran parte esencial de la vida diaria del Chapo Guzmán. Así fue como quedaron al descubierto. Las ollas con comida que se estaba preparando y que por supuesto nadie llegó a tomar. Unas veladoras de la Virgen de Guadalupe al fondo, más tortillas. Here we go, I told you, El Chapo keeps on giving us gifts. Um, yes, as we saw, this was uh, a special on Aquí Ahora, but I know that this in this category, it's overall the programs that we do. So whether it's interviewing a headliner or an entertainer or a politician or tackling some of the most impactful social issues in our society. Aquí y ahora, you know, team always goes out and, and tries to get the story behind the story. So on behalf of our executive producer, Jairo Marín, Janet Casel Miranda, who is here also, again, my co-host, Teresa Rodriguez, a great group of journalists uh, that work with us, this correspondence, including Maria Antonieta Collins, who will be very happy because this will be her first Emmy. Uh, after hundreds of stories that she has done, she's a fabulous um, correspondent and anchor. Anyway, so thank you very much. This is two very special days for us, two very special shows for us. And again, I know that I share it with my colleagues in, in the other networks. I wish we had more categories in Spanish because we really do a lot of work, but I'm very grateful that we get to take this home with us and show that no matter what language, journalism is good journalism. Please welcome the anchor of BBC World News America, Caddy Kay. Um, like Katie and Clarissa, I'll get straight on with it because you can always rely on the women to get us on, off air on time. The nominees for Outstanding Investigative Documentary are... City 40, Netflix. The Secret History of ISIS, Frontline, PBS. Three Days of Terror, The Charlie Hebdo Attacks, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. Terror, Independent Lens, PBS. The Look of Silence, POV. And the Emmy goes to Terror, Independent Lens, PBS. Accepting the Emmy, Lyric Cabral, producer, director. I mean, I could have set him up and just take a handgun and just put it somewhere and say, yo, y'all calling the locals, have the locals grab him right now. Boom, he got a gun. And yeah, it's all over with. 
but they don't want to do it that way. And I told them, I said, I'm not here to entrap nobody. They trying to make me force this dude into saying something to support terrorism. Thank you. I'm sort of glad our award came toward the end because typically we have a little bit of surveillance and some seats are empty, so that's a plus. Um, thank you to David, my co-director, Chris, our producer. Thank you to ITVS, particularly Lois Vossen, um, Nolan Walker, who gave us tremendous notes that arguably pushed us from good to excellent. I feel like I'm forgetting a lot of people, but um, very importantly, thank you to Saeed, who um, was very brave and opened up his life um, to cameras, which was obviously not a part of the contract that he signed. Um, and also to Marlene, and to Tariq Shah, and to Khalifa al -Akili, and to Majid Atakwa, um, and to all of the people that sort of allowed us into their lives without knowing what the end result would look like, who trusted David and myself on blind faith. Um, this award is for them, this award is for all of the Muslim communities here in the United States who post 9-11 have been disproportionately targeted um, in the name of Homeland Security. Um, we hope that for the media, for our colleagues that are here, um, if you've seen the film, we hope that it encourages you to sort of scrutinize the words and the languages, that you, the language that you use reporting on terrorism cases, and we hope that your language becomes more democratic and not just particular to one group. Thank you. The nominees for Outstanding Historical Documentary are... Black America Since MLK and Still I Rise. Over my life. Under Fire, the untold story of PFC Tony Vaccaro. HBO Documentary Films, HBO. Best of Enemies, Independent Lens, PBS. No Mas Bebes, Independent Lens, PBS. Team Foxcatcher, Netflix. John picks the pistol. And the Emmy goes to Best of Enemies, Independent Lens, PBS. Accepting the Emmy, Robert Gordon, producer, director. Shut up a minute. No, I won't. And some people were total Nazi, and the answer is that they were, they were well treated by people who ostracized them, and I'm for ostracizing people who egg on other people to shoot American Marines and American soldiers. As I know you don't as care. As far as I'm concerned, the only sort of pro or crypto Nazi yeah. I can think of is yourself. I, Failing that, that's, I would that's, only that's say that we names. can't have now listen, you the clear. right of the Stop calling here. me a crypto Nazi. Let's, let's Thank you, a surprise. Um, we made a film about a uh, flashpoint in the culture wars with the hopes that showing it uh, 50 years later would um, bring some kind of civility back to what has become uncivil discourse. Um, thanks for the award, but sorry we didn't have the effect, intended effect. <laughs> um, thanks to my film partner, Morgan Neville, and his staff at Tremolo Productions. We had great editors in Eileen Meyer and Aaron Wickenden. Tom Graves uh, shared the idea with us early on. Thanks to Julie Goldman um, and Cliff Phillips, our executive producers. Thanks to Lois Vossen and Independent Lens and everyone at ITVS. Um, Magnolia, Cinereach, Ford Foundation. Couldn't have done it without all y'all. Thank you very much. The nominees for Outstanding Editing Documentary are... Extremis, Netflix. Body Team 12, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. Orphans of Ebola, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. Hooligan Sparrow, POV, PBS. Love him. Thank you for playing but I think that's POV PBS. They're gonna push the boundaries.
And the Emmy goes to Body Team 12 HBO Documentary Films, HBO. Accepting the Emmy, David Dard, editor. So the whole I gotta tell my people in Liberia, if you're hearing me at this time, stay home, trust us, because we don't want the spread of Ebola. So we are telling you, go into your home, sit home with the family, lock the door, just keep to your home because it is where you know best. Stop too much visitation. Let us stop the you know, uh, congregating to places that will cause us problems tomorrow. Wow, this is a huge honor. Thank you. I was in Ebola quarantine twice after returning from Liberia. So I had 42 days of un uninterrupted time to edit this film. And uh, <laughs> I really want to thank my incredible wife for allowing me to do this film. Uh, to Paul Allen and his incredible team at Vulcan for their con contribution, incredible contribution towards the fight against Ebola. To our family at HBO, thank you so much. And especially to my producer, Bryn Mooser, and our team at Riot. We're a relatively young company. Uh, so proud to be uh, in the company of so many great production teams and news, news teams in, uh, here tonight. Thank you so much, Riot. I hope this is the first of many. Thank you. They'll get it afterwards. Uh, the nominees for Outstanding Cinematography Documentary are... David Attenborough's Light on Earth, Curiosity Stream, Desert Warriors, Lions of the Namib, Smithsonian Channel, Forces of Nature, PBS, Super Hummingbirds, Nature, PBS, Wild New Zealand, National Geographic. And the Emmy goes to Super Hummingbirds, Nature, PBS. Accepting the Emmy, Ann Johnson Prom, producer, cinematographer. Now, they push themselves to the limit. Hearts racing at 1,200 beats a minute, lungs bursting. They spend every last molecule of oxygen, every ounce of fuel. Great. These are, um, you know, just to be in this room with all these people who are making voices heard for the unheard. The, um, we work in wildlife to make uh, all those voices heard again. So, you know, all my friends <laughs> who are working so hard, <laughs> we work really hard to bring the world of nature and the world of wonder to you. So tomorrow morning when you walk out and see leaves shining in the world, uh, remember it really matters and we all need, the world needs your help. So the wild world needs your help. The nominees for Outstanding Research are... The White Helmets, 60 Minutes, CBS. The Mine Wars, American Experience, PBS. Challenger Disaster, Lost Tapes, National Geographic. Three Days of Terror, The Charlie Hebdo Attacks, HBO Documentary Films. HBO, Munich 72 and beyond, PBS. And the Emmy goes to Challenger Disaster Lost Tapes, National Geographic. Accepting the Emmy, Tom Jennings, Executive Producer, Director. Ah! Oh, 
coming because otherwise I'm going to keep the Emmy. <laughs> the voice from on high. <laughs> Should have done uh, research on the layout of the uh, building before he came down. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to my editor-producer, David Tillman, uh, people who thought the Challenger story, there was nothing else to say. We were able to go into NASA's archives and find material that had been long forgotten, and news reports that have been overlooked. And so we'd like to dedicate this to the crew of the Challenger, and this means a tremendous amount to us. Thank you. The nominees for Outstanding Business, Consumer and Economic Report are... Agro-Mafia, 60 Minutes, CBS. Not Paid, 60 Minutes, CBS. Rising in the East, 60 Minutes, CBS. Trump University Fraud, Anderson Cooper 360. CNN. I build team. The Anacortes Disaster, yeah, Fault Lines, Al Jazeera I'm International the USA, yeah. and the Center for Public Integrity. And the Emmy goes to Trump University Fraud, Anderson Cooper 360, CNN. Accepting the Emmy, Patricia DiCarlo, executive producer, CNN investigates. Do you remember when you said this? I'm a former licensed agent broker. At 29, I became the top 1% broker in the country. I build homes in Atlanta, Georgia, and I used to live in Beverly Hills. Yes, I, if I said those things, they are true. I did live in Beverly Hills, and I- We have working. no record of you ever living in Beverly Hills. Okay. Thanks so much, this is very exciting. Um, I wanna say thank you first to uh, Jeff Zucker, our fearless leader, who um, has a great commitment to investigative journalism at CNN and has really um, pushed us forward to do greater and greater work every single day. To Terrence Burke, Michael Bass, Andrew Morris, our other fearless leaders. Um, to Drew Griffin for being Drew Griffin, no one else quite like him. Uh, senior producer Nellie Black and Kurt Devine, who started investigating Trump University and the more they dug, the more fraud they found, um, really until it turned out to be just an incredible series of stories. And I also want to thanks, uh, say thanks to our families who are very patient when we have to work late. And thanks to the entire team at CNN Investigations. Thanks so much, you guys. The nominees for Outstanding Investigative Report in a Newscast are... Before we sat down the Genetic the Testing Gold plan. Rush, CBS News, CBS. Hidden Dangers on American Roads, CBS News, CBS. Wounded Warrior. CBS News, CBS. What the public doesn't see. Emergency workers Brian Ross investigates. Sky Rage, Nightline, ABC. Daughters for Sale, Nightline, ABC.
And the Emmy goes to Wounded Warrior, CBS News, CBS. Accepting the Emmy, Jennifer Janish, investigative producer. Their mission is to honor and empower wounded warriors. But what the public doesn't see is how they spend their money. Army Staff Sergeant Eric Millette came home from Iraq in 2006 with a bronze star and a purple heart, along with a traumatic brain injury and PTSD. Initially, he admired the charity's work and participated in its programs, and he got a shout out from the president. Thank you. My deepest thanks to the Academy and judges for this great honor. I'm so grateful to CBS News President David Rhodes and Senior Vice President of News Ingrid Cyprian Matthews for their commitment to investigative journalism. Thank you to my correspondent Chip Reed, who isn't here tonight but was a tremendous partner on this series of stories. Thank you, Lynn Tepper, Chief of Investigations, for your unwavering support and trust. I'd also like to thank Steve Kappas, Chris Licht, Ryan Cadro. Heather Abbott, Eric Bloom, Heather Spinelli, Mary Sformis, Al Ortiz, Karen Raffensperger, Nick Poser, and John Sternberg. And my deep gratitude to Scott Pelley for your valuable guidance. I'm so grateful to work with such fine reporters at CBS News. Finally, I'd like to dedicate this award to the memory of my late cousin, Marine and Texas National Guardsman Howard June Cook III. He was a supporter of Wounded Warrior Project, like so many veterans and so many Americans, and I hope our reporting reformed that charity and put all charities on notice that we'll, we will be watching the way they spend their donations. Thank you. The nominees for Outstanding Short Documentary are Extremis, Netflix. A Girl in the River, The Price of Forgiveness. HBO Documentary Films, HBO. Body Team 12, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. 4.1 Miles, The New York Times. The Secret Life of Muslims, Vox. And the Emmy goes to Body Team 12, HBO, Documentary Films, HBO. Accepting the Emmy, David Darg, Director, Producer. So we are telling you, go into your home, sit home with the family, lock the door, just keep to your home because it is where you know best. Stop too much visitation. Let us stop the you know, uh, congregating to places that will cause us problems tomorrow. Again, such a privilege. Wow. Um, this film is about an incredibly brave team of Ebola body collectors in Liberia. And this award is in their honor. Um, thank you for giving it to us. Again, I want to thank HBO for your support for this film for Paul Allen and his work to end Ebola. Uh, we're so honored, thank you so much. Have a great night. Please welcome our final presenter, CNN anchor and chief Washington correspondent and the host of The Lead with Jake Tapper, Jake Tapper. So I'm the last presenter, which gives me a great deal of power right now. Now I'll just start. The nominees for best story in a newscast are... Undercover in Syria, CNN. Gangland, Nightline, ABC. Shots fired, Nightline, ABC. Retaking Mosul, Vice News Tonight, HBO. Flashpoint, Refugees in America, World News Tonight with David Muir and Nightline, ABC. 
And the Emmy goes to Gangland Nightline ABC. Accepting the Emmy, Jenna Millman, senior producer. How many people are they holding here? 169 people in here? 169, four cells. I'm not sure you can get a sense of how small this is, but this is tiny. They're just piled on top of each other. What does it say on your forehead? El sello de la bestia. 666. 666, he says. Now Dan's going to be really sad he wasn't here tonight. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you that it's very hard to turn out little short films on a daily news schedule. And this team, this is Shilpi, she made it up here this time, to a remarkable job. Also, I just wanted to mention that there's a, a murder an hour in El Salvador still, and the families of, that we covered are all still stuck there, and no one seems to be really helping them. So we need to keep paying attention. Thank you. The nominees for best report in a news magazine are Anonymous Incorporated, 60 Minutes, CBS. Finding Refuge, 60 Minutes, CBS. The New Cold War, 60 Minutes, CBS. The White Helmets, 60 Minutes, CBS. Yemen Under Siege, Frontline, PBS. And the Emmy goes to Yemen Under Siege, Frontline, Frontline at PBS. Accepting the Emmy, Safa El Ahmad, director, producer. I've been in Taz many times over the years. Um, it is a beautiful city, uh, extremely vibrant. It is considered the, the cultural heart of, uh, of Yemen. Um, and when I arrived uh, in Taz after being smuggled up the mountain, uh, I saw a different city. I still didn't recover from the first time, so <laughs> I'm going to keep this short and say this is, again, still for the Yemenis, the amazing Yemenis, that without them, I would have no understanding of what's going on in the country and that have opened their lives in the worst moments possible to me. And I know everybody here feels that way when you go into a, a conflict zone and, and how important it is for you when you go away that you tell stories the best way possible. So thank you. The nominees for Best Documentary are... Children of Syria, Frontline, PBS. A Girl in the River, The Price of Forgiveness, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. Welcome to Leith, Independent Lens, PBS. The Look of Silence, POV, PBS. Thank you for playing. POV, PBS. And the Emmy goes to A Girl in the River, The Price of Forgiveness, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. Accepting the Emmy, Charmaine Obeyed Shinoy, producer, director. I can understand why she's inclined to reach a compromise. Our justice system is not strong enough to provide her security. Let's assume the accused are convicted and sentenced to five years of imprisonment. And they come out. And then they again try to kill her. Who is going to protect her? Thank you. A 17-year-old girl had the bravery to stand up and the commitment to fight a system. And because of that, a law was changed in Pakistan, and you had 
newspapers and television channels reporting honor killings in a different way. So it only took the commitment of one single person to do that. Tonight, I want to thank HBO, Sheila Nevins, and Lisa Heller for believing in this. I made this entire film pregnant, so actually it was all of them that made this film. To my co-producer, Haya, Nader, my DP, Asad, who's not here with us tonight, Jeff Bart, Wendy, everyone here tonight, Chris, has been the team that made this possible. So thank you. So that's a wrap, but on behalf of the Academy, thank you. Congratulations to everyone honored here tonight. Good night.